Welcome back to Python in Excel. This is part 18.3 and today we're going to continue cleaning up this time series chart. We're trying to change this into this. After yesterday's video, I realized that there were two parts of the code that could be improved. So let's take a look at those first. This highlighted section is drawing each of the non-selected lines and coloring them dark gray, but it's iterating through the columns to do that. And that's not really necessary, so let's take a look at a simpler way. Okay, I've commented out the old code. We'll start by creating a variable. We'll call it selected line and set it to cell C2. Next, highlighted line is going to be the series from the pivot data frame whose column header is the selected line. All of the other lines are going to be gray. We can find those by creating an index that doesn't include the selected line. Lucky for us, there's this handy little difference method pivot.columns gets all the column names from the data frame, then the difference method subtracts a list of items from those column names. In this case, the list just contains the selected line. Now we can plot all those grain lines in one go. We just slice the pivot data frame using this not highlighted index and then apply the plot method as before. Finally, we plot the selected line in a single line the same as we did previously. Let's test it's doing the same thing. It has, so we can delete the old code. The next part that needs improving is this section iterating through the spines. Okay, that's commented out. We can set the color of all the spines by slicing the spines like this. Similarly, we can remove the top and right borders in one go by slicing on a list of just those two items. Let's check that it still works. It does, so we can remove the old code. Okay, great, that's much better. The next thing to change are the labels on the x-axis. Currently, it's just showing the day of the year. But when we think about a date, we don't think, oh, I went on vacation on day 157 and returned on 171. No, that's ridiculous. So we use actual dates, so our chart should use actual dates. We'll create a new column in the data frame called xlabel, and we'll populate it using df.date.dt dot strif time. I assume that's how you pronounce it and I think it means string format time but I pronounce it strif time and you should too. And into that we'll pass this format string percent %b space percent %d and the percent %b gives us a three letter abbreviation of the month and the percent %d gives us a two digit day of the month. Then we change the index argument of the pivot table method to use the new column and see what we've got. Well, that's not looking good. Luckily, I know why that is. It looks like that because the pivot table method has a parameter called sort whose default value is true. That means the data in the pivot table is sorted by X label, which means April is at the beginning and January is in the middle and everything's not where it should be. We can easily turn that off by using sort equals false like this. That's much better. Okay, this chart is improving, but you know what's wrong with it? It's way too detailed. No human is going to look at every single spike and derive meaning from it. It ain't gonna happen. So let's smooth it out a bit. There are many ways to do this, of course, but for the sake of simplicity, I'll use a seven day rolling mean. That should maintain the seasonal trends while getting rid of some of the clutter. I'm gonna make some changes to DF by reassigning to it. I'll wrap this in parentheses so I can put each method on a different line. This is called method chaining. It's easier to read. First, we'll use set index to make the date the index in the following operations. Next, the rolling method to create a seven day rolling window. We'll also set the min periods parameter to seven. This makes sure that we don't have any windows with fewer than seven days. Then we'll use the mean method. This min period setting will set any rows whose window doesn't have seven days to not a number. That's basically the first six rows in the data. But since those rows will then be of no use to us, we can just drop them. We drop NA. And finally, we'll use reset index to put the date back as a column of the data frame. That seven day rolling mean has made the chart much easier on the eye. We can still see the trend and compare the selected year with the others, but it's not so chaotic. And then of course we can change the rolling period to something else like 14 or 28. In fact, why don't we let the user decide what the window length should be? we'll create a variable called min periods and set it to the value in C3. Then we can modify the rolling method to use that value. But of course if C3 is blank, the code breaks. 
So we should create a default value. And we do that using a ternary operator, which is kind of like the if function, except it's not in the same order. We'll call it days, and it will just be min periods if min periods, otherwise seven. Then we'll put the days variable in the rolling method instead. Great, it's defaulted to seven days. Now we can happily type whatever number we want into C3 and change the calculation of the rolling mean. Looking at this chart a bit closer and inspired by Carlos of Spilled Graphics, seriously check out his website spilledgraphics.com and his YouTube channel at Spilled Graphics, I've decided I'm going to add some grid lines. It's actually pretty easy. We just do that with axe.grid. We put true as the first argument and then which refers to whether we want to use major or minor grid lines. And then axis equals X, I don't want any Y grid lines, and color equals 0 0.8 as a string that will be, give us a kind of light gray. Okay, very nice. You can see I've added some drop downs here to the year selector, and we can just type in whatever rolling mean that we want. That's it for today and for part 18 of Python in Excel. Thanks for watching, I hope it's been useful. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day.